today we're going to do some sun mechanic that's right we're going to be in the sun today trying to take this engine apart this is a toyota 1nz engine from the 2007 year model the first thing we want to do is remove this valve cover this twin cam cover rocker cover then we're going to remove this timing chain cover and we're going to remove the cylinder head then we're going to take the pistons out of the block remove the oil pan that flywheel for an inspection now in the video description you will see a link on how to test the valve seat for a leak the reason you want to do this is you want to make sure that the chain or the belt is not broken causing the camshaft to make the valves strike the piston if that is the case then you're gonna to have to rebuild that cylinder head so let's start by taking off the valve cover we have one two three four five six seven eight nine bolts ten eleven let's take a look at what those fasteners look like so those two ones are much longer than these over here that is a nut and that is another nut here we have a bolt these are two bolts and that's the last one let's pop this valve cover off twin cam cover off and see what's inside look like Now I want to try to save the gasket because if you're not in the country or a place where you could get new gasket, you can simply reuse these old ones by cleaning them up with some brake cleaner or purple blaster, letting them dry and then you could use the silicone for sealing them perfectly. Before we take a look at inside of the valve cover, we can see we have these oil tube right here that feeds from here up from here and it squirts oil onto the cam for lubing the lifters and the rocker arm. So as a performance mechanic, I will tend to increase the size of this hole a little more so we can get more oil flow up in the head because the valve trend is very important that, that it gets the oil that it needs for lubricating. When we take a closer look on the inside of the cylinder head down at the bottom, we could see it's pretty clean. This is something like close to factory. So we don't have a lot of carbon or sludge build up in here which is very good. This is what we want to see. We also have no damages to the cam lobe. Of course, it will require rotation for a complete inspection. Now, the next thing we want to do is take this timing cover off. And here we have one, two, three, four, five, six seven eight nine ten then we have to get this bracket out of the way because there's some bolts behind there so let's get this off this looks like it's a 14. all right i have a two by four for stabling the engine so it does not flip over with us while turning these bolts. Now this bolt here is going to be a little difficult so you're going to need a long handle ratchet. I like to use this with a socket just place it on the end. So 
and this is where you're going to learn technique. It's not just turning the bolt off, you have to hold the engine and then you have to apply muscle to it for getting these bolts off. Now if you have an impact or a drill, good luck for you. But I don't recommend that you use that impact and drill for starting the bolt when installing it because you could cross tread the bolt and the hole. We have a 12 bolt and a 10 at the rear of that bracket that we took off. So I have a 12 socket here. We're first going to remove all the 12. Now we have a 12 up here sitting on a 10 stud. Sorry, that's a 12 nut sitting on a 12 stud. We have another one here. And another one up here. That is what the 12 stud with the 12 nut looks like. Goes on like that. The remaining bolts are all 10. I'm going to start from the bottom here. What I want to do is I just want to release all of them. So right next to this one, there is another one that's not there. Someone must have removed that. where the water pump will go that was removed by someone else in the salvage yard
is where the crankshaft pulley would go. Up here is the tensioner for the serpentine belt. One bolt that is hidden right here. That is a 10. It's very important that you get it out. Most people who don't have this video will most likely forget it and try to pry this off and simply break the aluminum cover. So let's get this out of here. So at the rear of this cover in the back, you have a ledge that you can place a wooden block. Don't recommend you use pry bar. And by tapping it with a hammer, it should separate. We have successfully removed the cover without damaging it. Looks pretty good inside. That's the oil pump and that's the o-ring that sends the oil into the block. Put this to the side. This bracket on the top. We have 10 millimeter bolts here. Video description there are more videos you see what a slack or loose timing chain looks like okay so now we have that removed we'll take a look at the chain you see this chain is very tight which means the tensioner is good and all this component get a close up look at the timing chain cover compartment This here is the timing chain tensioner. This is tensioned by oil pressure. Let's take a look at removing this tensioner. Careful attention to the bolt. Now we've got that out of the way. So we can see there's a oil hole in the back there. That's for the oil pressure to enter this. So it can extend. Now you have a little lever here. You press it in and it brings the tensioner back. Once you take your hands off the lever, it extends all the way out, and then it can't be pushed back. So you press that in. Let's put this away. Let's focus on taking the chain off. So most of the time you want to reference the timing mark. I've already established the timing mark on the sprocket and the cylinder head. But this is something you always want to consult with the factory service manual. Our main objective right now is just to remove the component 
So this tensioner arm will be removed. Inspection must be taken here. You want to just feel this plastic. If you feel a groove in the plastic, it needs to be replaced. In our case, there's no groove here. This appeared to be a very low mileage engine. So we're going to lift this chain up. You see how that camshaft just went like that? That's because it was sitting at an angle on the valve tapping. And that's why it made that move. So this is our chain. Now for your neck. Here we have a 10 millimeter to remove. And what we do is when we remove this tensioner brace, because this is the side that braces, we want to take an inspection of that also. that nut that's a short one very important you remember where that bolt came from sometimes you might be confused with a nut and bolt this is a bolt we have already established what a nut is before you want to do the same thing here just pass your finger sideways like that might need to take the glove off but I could already tell this is in good condition based on the tightness of the timing chain when it was fully equipped. So this is bring us to the end of this part of the video. We're going to continue by taking the cylinder head off to get a look at the pistons. Let's close out this video with this important information pertaining to this timing chain tensioner. On some model engine, this tensioner will be able to remove like this from the rear of the engine. There will be two bolts here that you could unbolt and simply slide the tensioner out like that. In our application, that's not the case. We need to remove the timing cover as you can see. But what's important and what will make you need to remove this tensioner is because the chain starts to slap. In the video description, there is a video that shows you, that demonstrates that chain slapping or rattling noise caused by this tensioner. The reason it's caused by this tensioner is because the oil pressure that enters into the body of the tensioner will seep by this plunger, causing a weak pressure against the tensioner arm, making the chain slack and causing it to slap creating a rattling noise. So before you attempt to replace the timing chain and all its component, make sure this tensioner is properly functioning. And like I said, on some model, you'll be able to remove it from the back here because there will be two bolts and you'll be able to slide it out from here. On this application, as you can see, you need to remove the timing cover, which is much more difficult.